Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Simon Cromer and today I'm gonna be taking you through a full boat wash on this 2021 Roballo in Fort Lauderdale. Guys, let's get to it right now. If you are a boat owner, if you are a boat detailer, if you are a boat washer, this video is going to be great for you. This is a full tutorial on how to properly wash your boat. So first things first, we're going to give everything a really good rinse, open up hatches, uh, spray out everything, rinse down seats, rinse down consoles, rinse down the hard top, the seats, the vinyl, the outboards, everything. So I think people like to rush this. They like to get through it really fast and they either don't rinse the boat at all or they just give it a super, super quick light rinse. Guys, it is so important to rinse your boat. I spend at least five to 10 minutes rinsing the boat before I actually start washing. So this is gonna get all the initial dirt, all the initial salt or most or some of the initial salt off the boat. You really don't wanna be uh, scratching the boat in the gel coat. So you want to make sure you can rinse off everything possible before you start. So. The floor is, if you can see, the deck is very dirty. So um, obviously I gave it a good rinse, but that will need extra cleaning at the end. So also important is what you're gonna be using to wash the boat. Uh, what kind of brush you're gonna be using? Are you gonna be using a hand mitt? And then on a little boat like this, a hand mitt is great because there's so much um, inside the boat to work with and the hand mitt comes in super, super handy. So very, very, very nice there. And my opinion is, and I'm using Stark Pure Clean. Like I said, my opinion is it's one of the best boat soaps you can use. It's pH balanced. It's really not exp that expensive. Um, and it's just a great soap. It has good foaming agents and it just makes it really, really simple to wash and it smells good. So my favorite boat soap by far is Stark Pure Clean. So I will throw that up on the screen. You guys can link to that using my code TOPDOC15 to get 15% off at uh, checkout when you purchase any Stark products. So, I did end up hopping up here on the hard top because I just want to make sure I got it really good. So you got to be careful. Uh, this is a 2021 Rabal, so it is in really good shape. So it can get slick and get slippery. Just be very, very careful. I am not wearing shoes, but there are boat shoes out there. And um, I would recommend that you do wear some boat shoes. I actually just picked up a pair and they come in really nice. So we are actually in Fort Lauderdale washing today. So um, we're going to continue with the wash. So I washed the hard top rinsed it really really good washed it really good and then i uh, sprayed it down so i like to do the boat in sections so wash a section spray it off and then continue with the next session section so i kind of piece it out as i go um now i'm going to be hitting the seats with a vinyl yeah basically it's a mild, mold and mildew remover product so down here in florida the boats get mold really really quick so i'm just doing a light application this boat is only three, four months old, but it's never been touched. So it is slowly starting to get a little, little, little bit of mold. So that's just gonna sit on there for a minute. That's also a Stark product. And I will also link that. That is the mold and mildew remover from Stark. So an amazing product. It's already concentrated um, where it's gonna be safe for your vinyl. So you don't have to do anything yourself. You don't have to mix the bleach or do any of the concentration yourself. So. All that is already done for you. That's what makes Stark super easy and super simple to work with. So that will be linked, guys. Make sure you purchase that. If you live in Florida or in a very harsh environment where you're getting a lot of sun, a lot of heat, and just a lot of moisture and basically humidity, it's a great product to have on hand. So up north uh, off the Great Lakes, you're not going to run into mold and mildew too much but down here in florida most certainly so open up the hatches gonna wash the hatch gonna wash everything um and i like to wash you know the seats and i like to wash the fiberglass first and then i will wash the windows last so i do the windows last when i'm doing this section just because i don't want the soap to dry on the windows so after all this i will take a glass cleaner regardless and i will wash the windows separately so I'm always trying to provide the most amount of value. People really, really value the windows being crystal clear. And of course I would too. So you don't want any water spotting or anything like that. So just giving everything a good scrub. And as you see, the windows I saved for last in this front bow area of the boat. So pretty simple there. Now we're gonna give everything a really, really good rinse. Um, another thing to mention is I am using a yacht stick. So this is 
one of the newer items that marine detail supply carries and it's basically a it's a carbon fiber uh, and they call it a yacht stick so uh, it's it's very easy to work with um it has multiple attachments so you can essentially make the pull as long as you could ever want it because you can just keep attaching more and more pulls so unlimited pull length and i think the length of this one i'm not sure if it's like nine feet i think that's the one i have is about nine feet and you know it pretty much covers mostly any boat so i'm also using the yacht stick uh deck brush now when you're using the yacht stick deck brush it's a medium brush so it's not super fine so a few things to make sure that you don't do is never ever ever wash a painted boat with the yacht stick gray brush it's too thick it's going to leave scratches but on gel coat like this it's really not bad and um it'll work so it'll get by if you wanted to you could always attach or you could just use a sure hold you guys sure hold blue brush is amazing 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 um since this isn't one of our details um you know i'm using the gray brush and it'll be okay the gel coat is is pretty you know in terms of the hardness it's a lot harder than paint so we'll be okay here so everything in the inside though inside this cockpit area i'm just using the hand mitt because it just makes so much more sense so on any center consoles on any dual consoles any walk arounds any of these small type of boats like this it's just so much easier to use a hand mitt and the hand mitt is not going to scratch anything so it's it's a microfiber hand mitt i love this one i believe this might actually be a chemical guys hand mitt so i will also attach that and link that to the video so washing all the pulls guys we don't forget anything so all the pulls again did the uh council area did all the side walls all, all, all that kind of stuff getting the seats underneath the seats the vinyl um the transom part and just making sure that we wash every single square inch so boat washing it's not hard it just comes down to attention to detail and effort so anybody can wash a boat um really it's just like i said it comes down to discipline and effort and just putting in the work so doing this um sectioning this out and we're on the middle section now of the boat so pretty much washing the windows last as i stated previously and we're working down the back into the transom getting that vinyl piece where the seat folds out making sure we get the tracks and all the drainage system tracks because those tend to build up and get dirty and even you know making sure for the client that their um, drainage system is just unplugged so that's also important and it's just something super simple you can do to really impress someone um, and just kind of show them that you know you really care about their boat and that you do know what you're doing and you know you're gonna take it the further step so i also have a it's a water filter attached to the hose so i think i have upgraded my water system a little bit but it's it's not completely i'm gonna eliminate water spotting but the customer definitely noticed and he was very surprised and he was very happy to see that um you know that I was using a water filter so people they just want to clients they just want to uh know that they can trust you and know that you care about their boat so if you genuinely do it's going to help out a lot so now we're moving on to the transom area going to clean out the fish boxes and gonna sometimes the fish boxes are a pain people tend to neglect those uh so we're gonna have to do a good wash there this well this this is a monthly client or was going to be a monthly client until um we ended up making different plans in terms of location so that will be in another video but gonna wash underneath that hatch where the um ladder comes out so again we're not skipping anything gonna wash the outboards fully getting every piece and um after we do this and get the outboards i'm actually going to go up to the council and i'm going to lower the outboards into the water so i can get the track so again every 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 single piece of the boat is getting touched so i believe this boat took me since this was an initial wash i had to do some extra scrubbing so i think this one took me like an hour and a half maybe two hours and it is a rel relatively smaller boat so um i always put in the time to do the best that i can do um on every single job um i wanted to go back to yeah sure hold so in terms of brushes guys um, I really do like the Surehold brush system. I think it's probably the best system out there. 
I love the carbon fiber yacht stick. Um, it's very, it's in a very expensive, almost luxury type of brand, and they do a really good job. And you know, I am all about you know luxury and and one percent and and getting the best supplies regardless of the cost. But honestly, I think the Surehold system might be the best. Although I do like to attach the which you're not technically supposed to do, but I like to attach the Surehold brushes on the Yacht Stick carbon fiber um, Yacht Stick because I think it works really good and it makes everything super, super light. So the Yacht Stick brush is actually super, super heavy, um, but the Surehold brush is super light. So you have a really light pull, a really light brush. Now Yacht Stick will uh, cover and I believe ensure anything that you know, if, if perhaps your brush or something were to either, you know, say you started losing a bunch of the brushes, like a lot of the brush um, pieces, if they start to fall out of the brush, I believe Yacht Stick would cover that. But if you attach any sure hold or, you know, if you have a sure hold brush on that pool, it is going to sink if you drop in the water. So the Yacht Stick, it's not going to sink because it's carbon fiber. Neither is, neither is the brush, which is um, plastic. But if you attach a sure hold brush on the yacht stick, it will sink. So try not to be too complicated, but um, that's kind of how I see it. So now we're washing the hull. Uh, we did the outboards. We pretty much sprayed off and washed as much as we could. It's really important to take good care of the outboards. People tend to neglect them. People tend to, uh, they do. They, for whatever reason, people tend to neglect the outboards. They don't like to take good care of them. But that's the most important part of the boat, and it's important to keep keep up on them. And people really struggle to detail those as well. So you can see I am trying to get the water line off. The client came out, actually wanted to talk for a minute. So trying to get the water line. So I did get some salt on the brush. So definitely going to rinse the, the brush off before I get back at it. Um, the water lines, they do build up just because, and people, people wonder, you know, what does the water line come from? Well, it comes from, you know, and you'll get that off of Lake Erie, any of the Great Lakes, and you'll get it down here in Florida. Well, it's heavy metals in the water is going to create that water line, uh, and it's it's almost in every water. Also, salt is going to do it as well, but uh, yeah, so you're, you're never going to run away from the, basically, the water line unless you have a lake or a freshwater lake or something that has no heavy metals, so... Um, just something that you have to keep up on and wash really good. So I'm going to do this hatchback here. I believe I had forgot it initially. Um, he has a metal pull in this back um, hatch, which I would not recommend to keep that in there because when he is driving, it's going to bounce around and scratch up everything in that hatch. So something that I did mention to him and basically coming back. And I, I like to clean the hatches by hand, so I don't necessarily like to get a bunch of soap and stuff in the hatches because a lot of people keep a lot of their supplies or their life jackets or just all, all sorts of stuff in their hatches. So we try to, um, you know, take care of that lightly, and I don't like to get a lot of soap, a lot of water in those hatches. And this, like I said, is a 2021, so this boat is really, really relatively clean in the inside the hatches and compartments. So now going in the back and cleaning off the very back piece which I couldn't really get with the pole because I didn't want to get it in the water so just making sure we get that um scum line away and keep it from coming back so making sure that we do everything good so after this um again this boat is not detailed it's not the floor is not coated it's not waxed so we have super clean and super clean is a degreaser safe for boats and um is actually recommended and even states on the label that it can be used for fiberglass and it's safe. So we are using super clean on the floor. You got to be really careful if you're in bare feet because you will slip and fall very quickly. It makes everything super slick and super clean is an amazing, amazing, amazing product. So I love this. Now, some people like simple green. I love purple per, or no super clean um, over simple green. Just my preference, my preference. They're both they're both really good, um, and I know a lot of people who like simple green. So super clean is mine, and that is what I use on the deck, and it works tremendously. So, you know, if you don't have your floor coated, you don't have it with a polymer sealant, you don't have it waxed, it's really, really great for cleaning. Um, you know, every time you go on a boat trip or, or things of that sort, you can always throw some super clean down there, and it'll clean up really, really nice. So... That pretty much solved the non-skid issue, and we always do the non-skid last. So if you guys didn't notice, I always work the boats from top to waterline, bow to transom. 
that's how it works and I will explain the drying process here in a minute but always afterwards so after I do the wash you know I piece it out in sections of the boat I wash and then I rinse well after I'm done with the entire boat I give the entire boat another whole complete rinse just making sure I have no soap it's so important guys people like to rush this you have to have to have to rinse everything super super thoroughly um, and then we're going to come back and dry the boat because I don't have a zero free water spot filter um that is there is a system out there um that some of the boat owners down here have where you can actually wash your boat and it will leave zero water spotting if you don't dry so we don't have that so we are going to dry the boat and i probably would dry it regardless just because it looks nice and and the clients here to, to see the boat so uh drawing every everything um metal um like and basically there is kind of a, a process too so i always do the hard top first just because that's always the first spot that i washed if the hard top is super oxidized it will automatically dry itself but this one is not so we did have good luck there and we were able to dry it so um yeah so a, a new a new boat versus old boat if you're washing an old boat that's super oxidized you're going to notice you're, you're not going to have to dry the boat a whole lot because the oxidation is just going to soak up all the water so if you're a boat owner and um, you're wondering if your boat's oxidized, well, if you're washing the boat and by the time you're done washing it, you hardly have anything to dry, that is a very, very good sign that your boat is um, definitely oxidized. So this boat is not, and we're going to dry everything. You saw that I washed the window, or I dried the windows. So there is a process to this. I do the windows first, so hardtop first, window second. Um, I do metal and outboards. Outboards are important. So you want to get the outboards directly after the windows and then yeah usually i'll do bright work get all the metal and then i'll just simply work on pretty much the bow and the fiberglass and i'll work my way back to the transom really just getting what makes sense first so anything that's going to dry and leave water spots always gets dried first uh and as we can see the windows is one of those bright works one of those outboards is one of those and so is a colored hull so those are all things to keep in mind while you're uh, drying the boat. It actually wasn't relatively too hot out, so I wasn't too concerned about um, drying the hull super quickly. And since the boat is in the water and it's not on a lift, um, it, it did make it a little more challenging. So we decided to stay in the boat and get everything first, final, non-skid. Um, usually what I do too, and maybe you guys could understand this if, if you washed a lot of boats before, but once my chamois gets pretty full of water, I don't like to waste any time. So once my chamois gets pretty full of water and it's kind of useless to try to dry the fiberglass, I just uh, soak up as much water on the non-skid that I can before I wring it out. So um saves time. It's super efficient. And really after hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of boat washes, um, I believe I have this kind of down to a science now so i am very efficient very fast it's very effective process for washing your boat um another thing to keep in mind when you're washing is make sure you're not turning on any switches that you don't want to be turned on um be very careful around the console because you could flip any of those switches turn uh turn the power on by accident so always be conscious of that uh that's that's something you definitely don't don't want to do and, and leave for the client to have to deal with so it does take a minute to dry. Now, I love, I love, I love this chamois. So now where I am going to prefer Yacht Stick is their chamois over Surehold. I love the Yacht Stick chamois. It does not fade. It does not get old. However, sometimes uh, since it is more of a vinyl material, well, vinyl, it's, it's not. I believe the Surehold's more of like a, like a cowhide or something type material where this is more I like that synthetic it's like a synthetic chamois mop so it uh will kind of drag a little more as in terms of a little more stickiness but other than that it's not bad and that is my favorite favorite chamois is the yacht stick chamois so i will throw that up there as well now after we do all the drying i come through i do my whole process of basically extra drying so this is where i take my ultra plush i give everything that i couldn't dry with the chamois by hand so and then guys i don't have enough time so i'm going to throw everything up on the screen in terms of the rest of the process because my gopro unfortunately died and i didn't get to show my whole interior process but after i dry the boat i wipe down all the seats with 303 protectant um on all details i use carpro pro which is a little more high-end product for in which i say for detailing clients then i will make sure all the bright work is free of water 
I will clean the council area with Stark Hydrate if necessary. And then I will make sure and clean the windows with glass and any eyes and glass, I will clean that with IMAR. So guys, that's the full process. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment. Make sure to share this with other people. The whole point of this channel is to help more people reach more people. Guys, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button now and I will see you on the next video. Peace out.